How's it going guys? So in this tutorial, we are gonna be creating this animation right here from start to finish. It's gonna be really fun. This is all gonna be done in the shading, so we're gonna start off with creating a really highly detailed, almost wood-like looking pattern. Then we're gonna use the masking to cut out some of that shape so we can start making some stuff that looks kind of like a river. Then we're gonna use some more shading tricks to take some of those patterns and highlight them to make them brighter so that they will glow and the other ones won't glow. After that, to create that topographic map inspiration, we are gonna be creating a grid floor for the bottom. Then all we're gonna have to do is animate the pattern animate the camera, and will be completely finished. This animation is part of a series of tutorials here on YouTube that are inspired by topographic map art and animations. I'll be posting four of these tutorials back to back here on YouTube, so if you wanna learn more of this stuff, you can go and check out the other ones like this. They're all really cool and there's a lot of fun things to learn. On Patreon, I posted what I'm calling the topographic blueprint, which is an hour and 20 minutes of training of all the shading, geometry nodes, and animation tricks that are combined to make these four animations and many others. Here on YouTube, all those elements are combined to make really cool animations, but on Patreon, I'm showing you every individual effect and tip and trick so that you can combine them and make your own original topographic map inspired animations. So if you wanna check that out, that is gonna be linked in the description and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, let's get into this tutorial. All right, all of this is gonna be done in uh, the shading. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a plane. I'm gonna hit S, one, zero, Control A, apply that scale. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and get a brand new window. This is gonna be the 3D viewport. This is going to be the shader editor. I'm gonna hit N just to move that and click new. And then right over here, we're gonna go here to Eevee. I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna click on the material settings and uh, I'm gonna go here from dithered to blended. Make sure you do have a material. And then that is gonna keep you from having grainy transparency. And then we're just gonna go here to the EV view. And then in the uh, compositing tab up here, I'm gonna click use nodes. I'm gonna type in glare and switch this over to fog glow. So we'll go back to layout and now we can start. So here in the emission, let's give it a strength of three for now so we can see what's happening and then I'm gonna hit this drop down right up here and click on always. That's gonna turn on all of our compositing. So world brightness, we'll bring that down to black. Let's get a color ramp and let's plug that color ramp into the color and pick our final output color, something like a nice light blue, something like this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a mix color, plug this here. I'm gonna make B black and this is just for some things that we're gonna to need to do later. So let's go ahead and plug a color ramp into A. So if we bring factor over to the right, that's just the black, factor over to the B, that is this color ramp. And let's go ahead and add in our texture. So let's get a noise texture and let's get in a wave texture. Plug that into the vector, and then I'm gonna hit Control T. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, that's that comes with Blender by default, You'll just hit Control T or just go ahead and get a mapping node, a texture coordinate, and use the object coordinate. So let's go ahead and focus on these guys. So here on the scale of the noise, don't worry about that. Bring the scale of the wave texture really low. I found 0.005 looks really good. And if you bring this in, you'll notice some things changing. We now have this. If you bring up the scale of the noise, it's gonna add more detail here, but we'll, that'll be more obvious in a second. Let's bring our distortion really, really high. And then our detail scale, high as well, something like three or four. And then our detail, once we bring up the detail, we'll start to get, kind of look like what uh, looks like wood. So we'll bring our detail to maybe 10. And also, I'm going to switch from sine to saw. That's just going to change it up a little bit. So now we have this, if we play with the phase offset, we get this really cool looking thing. What I want is this amount of detail. And again, if you play with the noise texture, you just add more and more detail into this. So play around with that, see what you like. I ended up settling around 13 for my detail. Now the reason why we added this mixed color rather than just maybe throwing it in like that and doing this is we need this color amp to control these textures here so we can leave it like this. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna get another color ramp and I'm gonna take this wave texture. If I just view it, that's what it looks like there. That's what it looks like with both of them combined. So what I wanna do 
is take just the wave texture, not the noise, but the wave, and because it is a larger texture, if I use it as a way to mask out, so I'll bring this over here, to mask out parts of this larger texture, it helps make it feel a little bit more, gives us some negative space, but we still get to enjoy the texture. So what I'm gonna do is I can move it around like that, and then if we get, try testing something out here just for fun. So you have this one moving this way, this guy moving this way, so everything kind of moves in that direction. If I go ahead and I get another node and I make it white, what happens is I can move this one here and I can move this one here. So you can move it from both sides, but you still get that saw effect. And so you get control of both. Or make this one white and both of these black and it, it's gonna kinda of cut out that middle. So see that? So you can move this around, it's gonna cut that middle out. Now this is not preferable, but you can see how that works. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z until I have both of these. So now we have this effect happening right here, and you can bring it in, crunch it in however, however much you want, and then this detail scale is gonna have a lot of fun. So play with your distortion and especially the detail scale until you like what you see. I'm gonna go ahead and delete one of these white uh, nodes and just keep, keep it like this. And so now we have a really, really cool scene. And again, playing with the detail, playing with the scale of this, you can even play with the distortion of the noise and you can get a lot of stuff. So there's just a lot that you can play with and the phase offset is how this gets animated. Now what we can do now is play with the fact that we have emission strength that makes something glow. So we have this color amp that's creating the color. So let's go ahead and get a map range and plug the noise texture into the value and then plug the result into the strength. What I wanna do is get a bring our max color to sell something that is that glows. And if you play with the from minimum, it is gonna crunch that in to just highlight a few of these and then bring that minimum back to reveal the rest of the texture. So what this is going to do is bring out these middle lines and those are gonna be the only ones that glow. So then whenever we play with the phase offset, so let's find a spot where it looks really, really interesting, like something over here. When we play with the offset, we get this really interesting look where it's not all just everything, you know, the same brightness, right? That would look, that's just not quite as interesting. But if you do it like this, where we use this from minimum and just highlight a couple of these lines, and then we have the rest at that color, you can create a really, really cool, really interesting looking animation with combining some textures. So now that we have this, you can go back and you know, edit your texture even more to be whatever you want it to be. So play with this until you like what you see. And then see the alpha? So if I go here to scene world, so if I just go here to the material preview, you can see it's just a flat plane principled BSDF with uh, emission on top of it. You can't see through it. And I wanna add some things to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a color ramp I'm gonna plug this into the alpha, and then I'm gonna plug this mix into here. And that should show what we're looking for. You can switch it over to constant and then bring this in to make sure everything we're seeing is what we wanna see. You can switch it over here to see, okay, yep, the transparency is absolutely working. So that's what we want. So bring, it to, bring your color ramp to uh, a constant and then just crunch it all the way over there and we're going to get transparency. So now that we have this, the animation is of course going to come from the phase offset, just like this. It's going to be a very sensitive phase offset. So let's go ahead and create a grid floor beneath it to give it that topographic map, uh, like grid detail on the bottom. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to take this plane. I'm going to hit shift D. I'm going to send it pretty far down. It looks like my hit some buttons I didn't want to hit. So print it, send it far down like that. And then if we go back here to the view, you can see there's another map down there. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit X, click new, hit the period key and give it a strength of like three. So we have something down there. Let's just scale it up. I'm gonna go ahead, 
get my color ramp. Let's go ahead and plug this into the color. We're gonna get a we're gonna get a Voronoi texture and get a dot grid for the bottom. So I'm just gonna hit Control T, get that object coordinate, and use the distance. Bring random to zero. I'm gonna flip my color ramp and then bring this in. And so now we're gonna have a grid of dots going beneath it. And you can see that parallax effect, which is what we're looking for. And then we're gonna give ourselves a nice blue. And then what I wanna do is let's just go ahead and hit Shift D and get another plane right about there. Let's go back to the view. And notice, you can see that parallax effect happening. What I wanna do is I'm gonna go back to the flat view. I'm gonna click this bottom one. I'm gonna hit Shift D and then bring it up just kind of the middle portion there. Let's go back to the render view. And right here where it says number three, we're just gonna click that. And let's go ahead and go from Euclidean to Chebyshev. So now we have these squares, but let's flip that so that we have this, this uh, grid here. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go from linear to constant so that we can have the thinnest lines we can get. So something like that. And then I'm gonna bring that strength down. I don't want it glowing. Now notice we don't see the dots underneath. So we just need to plug this guy into the alpha. And then right here in the shader, we're gonna go here from uh, dithered to blended. And then now, if I make these a little bit thicker, you can see you can see that parallax effect um, working. So we're just gonna bring this down to be really thin. And then maybe a little bit brighter. And then I do want this grid to be bigger, maybe a scale of one. And then make this grid as thin as I can. There's, there seems to be a limit to how thin the grid can be, but that's okay. So now all I need to do is animate my camera and animate this texture moving to look really, really cool. So I'm gonna pick a spot of the texture that I think is really, really interesting. And then I'm gonna go and get an empty, an empty plane axis and place it right there so I can get my camera to look at that. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, camera, Control Alt Zero, snap it to view, and then in the constraints tab, I'm gonna get a track two, I'm gonna click that empty. So now when I move my camera, it's gonna stare right at the part I want. But notice how this really cool parallax effect is taking place. That is the point of, almost the entire point of this tutorial, is to make something really cool with this parallax effect. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna get myself maybe 400 frames, and this won't be a looping animation. The rare time, this animation won't loop just because it would, it's okay, We don't, not everything needs to loop. So I'm gonna get a keyframe, just gonna click, I'm gonna stretch there, and then just go something like that. So now we can look at this. Nice, it's really slow. The point is just to really highlight that parallax effect. I can even bring um, the dot grid further down, this further down, the dot grid further down, just to really make that parallax effect a lot more dramatic. And then let's head back to the shading and animate the phase offset of our animation. So we can go here, right over here to the phase offset. And it looks like this is a workspace I haven't worked in yet. So we're just gonna go ahead and get a timeline. Let's go back here. I'm just gonna hit the keyframe on the phase offset and then I'm just gonna move it around like that. Now, if I go back to layout, we can watch this animation take place. Are we real time? It's about 14 frames a second. So this is a bit slower than it will be real time, but this is how our animation is going to look. And it's gonna be really, really cool. And you can have a lot of fun with it, edit it, change it, do whatever you want to it. And it's just going to look awesome. These uh, effects just are really, really beautiful once you can play with them. And maybe you can even go back to, to back to the shading and say maybe more on the detail. Yeah, I think that looks better. So now we can see a little bit more, a little bit more interesting stuff here 
on the details. But that is how this animation is created. Let me show you how to export it and we'll be done. So go here to the camera icon, actually so the, the printer icon, select your resolution. If you want 4K, do 200. I highly recommend using a PNG sequence and just compiling those. Just go ahead and choose your folder. If you want a video instead of a PNG sequence, go to FF MPEG video, encoding to MP4, and then uh, medium quality to perceptually lossless, and you'll be done. So there you go. That's how you create that. Again, if you want to go on Patreon and check out the full hour, 20 minute video on how to make all of these effects and combine them and make some really cool things, you can check that out linked in the description. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.